I'm going to demonstrate how you can identify radar sites to use with the Beamfinder features in Plane Plotter. I'm using Beamfinder Plus because it works best in my area, but you'll probably want to use one of the other features depending on your receiver and where you're located. First of all, I bring up the pulse rate window. For Beamfinder Plus, I press U and the window will pop up like that. <coughs> and immediately you can see on the left hand side the pulse intervals, they're actually calibrated in seconds there but sometimes we refer to them in microseconds. On the right hand side of this display you can see growing from the right hand edge some green dots and some yellow dots. The yellow dots are every thousand microseconds vertically and every ten seconds horizontally. Take a look at some of these. This line of dots here, we're going to concentrate on that, it's about 6250 microseconds and you can see from the cyclic pattern that it appears that responses are being picked up by aircraft in a cyclic pattern. In fact, if you compare the green dashes with the yellow dots, you can see there are two and a half cycles of green dashes for 10 seconds on the yellow dots. So it's rotating in about four seconds. There's an, another one here, uh, something a little bit more confused up here at 8,000 microseconds. Around about nine, a very confused picture, rather fuzzy. And that suggests that there's a radar site using pulse, pulse interval scatter, um, randomization of the pulse interval, which is slightly more difficult to use. So we'll set that to one side. Up here we can see several other cyclic patterns. Many of these are closer to 10 seconds. So these radar heads are going around more slowly than this one. And up here, between 12 and 13,000 microseconds, we see some more strings of pulses, uh, green dots, which are, which are going around more like four seconds per rotation, so two and a half cycles per yellow dot. We have some more up here. Up here at 16 there's a, a confusion again which is a bit like the one at 8 and the two are probably related. Then up here there's some more fainter marks which represent less common pulse intervals. The intensity of the green is a measure of how often that particular um, pulse interval is occurring. So this one at 6250 we can see is occurring quite nicely and up here at around 8000 also appearing a lot. So we've satisfied ourselves that we've got some good pulses. If you don't see anything on there then your receiver isn't appropriate or you're not set up correctly for this particular uh, type of beam finder. I'm going to close that window now and I'm going to press the Z button. That opens a little pop-up window <coughs> and the pop-up window uh, shows you a list of the pulse intervals that Plain Potter has found in the last few minutes since we started processing. I'm going to choose the top one, which you see, as it happens, is 6250. And as soon as I click on that, you'll see some white dots appearing on the chart. Now, I want you to, to, to keep your eyes on that picture and see if you agree with me that, generally speaking, these white dots are popping up in a cyclic pattern. I'm trying to keep up with them with the cursor. But as I run around there, the, the, the white dots are occurring in the vicinity of the cursor. So what we have here is a radar beam centered somewhere in this area which is rotating clockwise and if you count the time, count seconds, it's about four seconds that the pattern comes round again. In actual fact this radar is located uh, in Gibraltar. So that's a very promising pulse rate for us to use. Now I'm going to run down to this one here, 7998, which is the, the one that I said was rather confused. That's 8,000 microseconds give or take. Now watch these white dots. They're appearing all over the place and in a more or less random way. There are still white dots, but they're not really behaving in a nice cyclic way. They pop up all over the place any time, and there's no particular rotational pattern that you recognize. So that tells you that that pulse rate is probably not worth using. Could be that there are two radar sites with the same um, characteristics, or it could be that this particular interval occurs for some other reason unrelated to the pulse interrogations from the ground. OK, I'm going to close that window now so all the, all the planes come back. <coughs> but now I'm going to stop processing and I'm going to clear the screen to make it a little bit clearer. Urge the flights. There we are. Now, I'm going to go to Tools, Radar, Site Analysis. Now, if you're doing this for the first time and provided the plane pod have been running for a while, you would then click on one of these to log the kind of beam finder data that you want to use. I'm not going to do that now because I've already recorded one to save us having to wait. Because you need to wait at least 10 minutes to measure the uh, rotational period 
and, and it could be much, much longer to get the best answer on the position. So I've already done that. So what I'm going to do now is move down to Analyze, and I'm going to open up a, a file of the pulse intervals for 6250, which we, which we decided was a good one. So I open that, and it tells me there are 38 aircraft in the file. 38 aircraft have been seen to transmit um, the messages at the interval that we've decided is characteristic of this particular presently unknown site. So I'll say OK to that. And now plane builder is analysing it. And as you can see, <coughs> for each of those aircraft, <coughs> it's got, or at least for some of those aircraft, it's got a period in seconds up for the rotation of the, of the beam. I said from the green dots it looked about four seconds. Well, plane plotter says it's 3.7. And when you uh, turn that into RPM, which is what we need, the answer comes out at 16.194 revolutions of the radar head per minute. So I click OK on that. Now plane plotter is trying to calculate the position. Now the position may not come out exactly right. Uh, there are all sorts of reasons. If your area doesn't overlap very well with the area covered by the radar, if there is an, uh, an asymmetry about the distribution of aircraft, or there simply aren't many aircraft, then <coughs> it could be that um, you're, you're going to get a, a dud result. But in this case, it's given us an estimated position, 36.2 north and uh, 5.3 west, with a scatter of 0.4. If the scatter is less than 1, it should encourage you. It's not a guarantee of success, as I said. It depends on the all sorts of characteristics. But, but if it's less than one, it does suggest that the position may be good. So we remember that and click on OK. Now, the next tool we've got to help us locate where the radar might be is to display the ping log file. I'm going to open up the same ping log file. Now what you see is a lot of red lines. <coughs> the red lines join any two aircraft where they were at the instant when they both appeared to exhibit the same pulse interval. Now if you think about it, two aircraft uh, being illuminated by the same radar means that those two aircraft must be in line with the site of the radar. So what we hope to see is a lot of red lines, all of which are pointing at the place where the radar site should be. Now this symbol here is what plane plot is estimating as the convergence of those lines. We may or may not agree with the exact location, but that's its best estimate. Sometimes you may find that doing it by eye gives a better result than, uh, uh, than using the position that plane plotter gives. Um, <coughs> you can see here that some, some of these lines are, are in different directions. This is a line here going quite a different direction. Well, it depends on the circumstances and how many pulses there are and so on, but it's quite possible for two uh, um, messages to come from an aircraft at a particular interval when in fact they were just accidental coincidences and they don't actually represent a time when they were being lit up by the radar. So you need to be aware that you, you shouldn't expect all of the red lines to converge. You may not even expect most of the red lines to converge, but there should be a recognisable convergence if it's a suitable radar to use for this method. Now this set of concentric uh, or radial lines, set concentric circles and radial lines up here, is actually where you click the cursor. So if I click down here on the symbol that plane plot has already suggested, you can see that most of these red lines, most of them, these aren't doing too well, but most of them are pointing in the same direction as the white lines which are radiating from that point. Well, that's pretty close. This, this little bit here is actually Gibraltar, and I told you that, <coughs> to the best of my knowledge and belief, the 6250 microsecond interval is characteristic of a uh, radar located on Gibraltar. So I've moved the cursor down just over Gibraltar and clicked it and now perhaps you can see that most of these lines are now better uh, matching the white lines. So where I've put that cursor is the um, best estimate using this method for the position. Now if you look at the bottom of the, the, uh, the screen, <laughs> it's off your picture I'm afraid, but the cursor coordinates can be read off and it's actually saying 36 degrees 8 minutes north and 5 degrees 24 minutes west. Well, the other analysis method, which doesn't, doesn't use this approach at all, if you remember, told us 36.2 north and minus 5.3. So that would be five, um, <coughs> 5 degrees and 18 minutes. So, so within, a, within a few minutes, both in latitude and in longitude, the two methods are agreeing. That may not always happen, particularly if the scatter is over one, 
and that can happen if you're away from the radar or there aren't many aircraft or they're not very well distributed. But between these two methods, this, this rather graphical method and the analytical method, you should come up with a good solution for the um, position of that particular radar site. <coughs> okay, I'm going to turn that overlay off now and I'm just going to show you the kind of results that you, know, you can get when it's all done and dusted. So, I'm going to choose at random <coughs> one of these aircraft. I'm going to double click on it to designate it and now what you can see, these blue lines and some orange ones are, are radials from radar sites that I've already identified from this area. And I hope you can see that by and large they're converging on the known aircraft position. Now of course when you already know the aircraft position that isn't a lot of help. But if you designate an aircraft whose position you don't know then most of these lines, the orange ones are a little bit more delinquent, but most of these lines should be giving you a fairly good idea where the unknown is. This white circle here is calculated entirely from those blue and orange beams. The uh, yellow symbol is from the position given by the aircraft, but the white symbol, the white ring, which you can see is agreeing reasonably well, not, not perfectly, but reasonably well, is the effect is the result of a calculation not assuming the known position of the aircraft. So that's how it's supposed to work. I hope that's helpful.